So without any further delay, I'm turning, uh, if he wishes so, to Mr. Torero Cullen uh, to start uh, our discussion. Thank you so much and hope you can hear me well. Yes, we do. So let me, let me start uh, by saying that the medium or long-term uh, future of agri-food systems cannot be predicted. That means it's a sector that works, it's a system that works under <coughs> risk and uncertainties. And risk is something that you can predict the probability of the loss function, and therefore you should be able to ensure. But uncertainties are something that you cannot predict and makes the system extremely complex. This system has a complex set of interconnected activities that go from primary production, processing, distribution, which includes trade, the trade issues you mentioned. In the last year, the maximum level of restrictions were about 17% of the calories traded which creates significant exacerbation also on prices. But it also brings consumption, and all of them are integrated uh, with socioeconomic and environmental systems, which depend upon the behavior of billions of people. All what we can predict is that we will be facing significant challenges in the future. What we observed in the 70s, in 2007 and 8, to 11, and today, brings up the complexity of the system, brings up a system which is, has a market structure which is highly concentrated in the exports, especially on cereals, and also brings a system that has significant interrelationships and interlinkages. The way and the extent to which we decide to address them will depend pretty much how we determine the future of the agri-food systems, as well as our future and the future of next generations. In FAO, we have been focusing on 18 drivers, 1-8, 18 drivers of agri-food systems. And they comprise, for instance, population dynamics, economic growth, macroeconomic stability, which is something that normally we didn't look at. And for example, today, high level of indebtedness of countries, exchange rate variability, and the link between energy and food has been a significant issue that we need to look at. But also in both science and innovation, poverty and inequality, capital and information intensification of production processes, a scarcity of natural resources, of course, climate change, and this is just to mention some of the 18 drivers. I will just want to highlight three key challenges that clearly emerge from the analysis that we have been doing on these drivers. The first challenge is that food is very unequally distributed across countries and households. And this is essential why trade today with the current distribution of food is crucial. Between 702 and 828 million people face hunger in 2021, and this is chronic hunger. More than 3.1 billion people cannot afford a healthy diet because they lack sufficient income to buy the required nutritious food. Many people have experienced unexpected income shortfalls through about by lockdowns due to the pandemic, and more recently, the rise in food and input prices in connection with the war in Ukraine and are creating an additional burden for low-income families. If, for example, we look today at the nine food groups that we need to consume to be able to have access to healthy diets, <coughs> most of Sub-Saharan Africa and some South Asian countries won't be able to have access to those nine food groups. The percentage rate they can self-produce from themselves right now in the photograph <coughs> today is extremely low. This brings, again, the importance of trade today. The second challenge is climate change and the fact that if we continue as of today, our agri-food systems will be unsustainable. And climate affects us in four dimensions. One is extreme temperatures. Second is ex excess of water or lack of water. We have just seen what happened in Pakistan and the problem of the flooding, uh, and which is a key rice producer, the fourth in the world, of India rice. Consequence of that, India put the export restriction. Third, volatility and variability. And fifth, how diseases will evolve. And in the previous session, you heard how health is changing because of climate. So agriculture is already affected by climate change and more frequent and stronger extreme events such as droughts, floods, extreme temperatures, and salt water inclusion due to rising sea levels. Furthermore, land, water, soil, and biodiversity are progressively degrading. Soil nutrient depletion, extensive deforestation, over-exploitation of marine resources, 
and pasture and, po and pollution at all levels raise serious concerns, not only for agri-food systems, but also for the broader socioeconomic systems and stability of the environment. At the same time, agriculture itself and related land use generates more than 20% of the global greenhouse gas emissions. And it is estimated that agri-food systems altogether contribute across approximately to one third of the greenhouse gas emissions. The third challenge is that we will need to produce more with less. And again, we need to distribute it better. And the United Nations Population Division project in one scenario that the world's population could reach close to 10 billion by 2050. This means that it is very likely that farmers will have to nourish an additional 2 billion people in less than 30 years from now. And they will need to do so while drastically reducing emissions, as this will be a requirement for all sectors if we are to avert catastrophic climate change. So colleagues, to address these challenges to move away from business as usual implies facing contrasting objectives. And we have to increase agricultural output while reducing its environmental footprint, pursuing sustainable yields while minimizing land use expansion, and increasing productivity while preserving employment, and just to mention a few of them. So we need an agri-food system transformation that brings a future of sustainability and resilience, where these trade-offs will be addressed and balanced, and can only materialize if the agri-food systems evolve and adapt on both the demand and the supply side. But for this, we also need to bring the concept of real cost of food to incorporate the externalities, positive or negative. That's the only way we will be able to align the support to agriculture and the incentives that we have in place. On the demand side, for instance, we need shifting diets for the ones who overconsume protein by increasing the share of planet-based protein sources. Not only will it be beneficial for mitigating emissions, but will reduce the risk from zoonotic diseases limit pesticide use and contribute to reduce some antimicrobial resistance. Different choices regarding quantity, safety, nutritional content, social and environmental footprint of food to consume and waste may trigger completely different agri-food system outcomes. Demand-side policies and provision of general public goods such as education and transparent information may promote critical thinking and awareness. For example, campaign that arise awareness about food waste have proven very effective to reducing it. On the supply side, optimal use of inputs, agroecological approaches, not only could reduce greenhouse gas emissions, but also provide co-benefits in terms of additional ecosystem services and fully integrated with the broader circular economy. Because adapted for and appropriate by small scale producers could additionally lead to sustainable intensification and resources sparing and improved logistics. And this is clearly today in the use of fertilizers and pests. However, the climate mitigation potential of some new agri-food system technologies will depend on access to low carbon energy as they are relatively more energy intensive. This also holds for deployment of cold chain and packaging technologies, which can help to reduce food loss and waste by increasing energy and materials use. Dear colleagues, let, let me just say that uh, the challenges ahead are, are daunting, and it brings a system which is playing under a world of risk and uncertainties. And we need to have a smart government policies, and we need to bring all the science and innovation, data, and good governance to be able to implement this, so that we can trigger the changes that we need now to be able to create a transformation of the system that could allow us to produce more with less in a sustainable way, but especially improve the distribution of, of the food across the world. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup pour ce, pour ce tour de force, Monsieur Torero Colon, et avoir à la fois aussi bien mis en avant les, les, mis en avant les, les, les difficultés de prédiction, l'instabilité, mais l'importance aussi des réponses de politique publique qui sont nécessaires. Et, et j'ajouterai peut-être aussi l'importance du rôle que les grands acteurs du monde de l'agroalimentaire doivent de plus en plus jouer pour apporter des solutions à ce système, à ce système instable.